everyone we have here a two pictures and we want you to describe or tell us what you see in those pictures okay thank you everyone and now welcome to the United States of America and here is Mr. Kubile and Miss Kruto to introduce to you the historical background of the developed country United States of America Thank you, Ms. Escaba. Good morning, sir. Good morning, classmate. I'm Eliza Cruto. So now, let's begin on the history of the United States of America. On September 9, 1776, the Continental Congress formally declares the name of the new nation to the United States of America. This replaced the term United Colonies, which had been in general use. So, bakit nga ba tinawag na United States of America ang dating United Colonies? Tinawag itong United States of America dahil pagkatapos ng French and Indian War, the British government determined that the colonies should help pay for the cost of the war. So, bakit nga ba nagkaroon ng French and Indian War? Nagsimula ang French and Indian War dahil nagtatalo sila kung ang Upper Ohio River Valley daw ba ay parte ng British Empire or ng French Empire. Dahil gusto ng mga taga Virginians at Pennsylvanians na magkaroon sila ng trade and settlement doon sa Upper Ohio River Valley. Kung kaya, pagkatapos ng French and Indian War, yung British government, sinabi na nila na dapat yung mga colonies ay tumulong o maging responsibilidad nila yung mga naapektuhan ng French and Indian War. So, pagkatapos ng French and Indian War, yung American colonies ay nag-declare na sila ng independence noong July 2, 1776 na ginanap sa Philadelphia. Ano nga ba ang Philadelphia? Ang Philadelphia po ay malaking city sa US o mas kilala din natin sa tawag na State of Pennsylvania. Ito po ay one of the oldest municipalities sa United States. So, ang Philadelphia daw po ay nagkaroon ng malaking parte sa American Revolution dahil ito ang nagsilbing meeting place ng mga founding fathers of United States dahil pipirmahan nila ang Declaration of Independence noong 1776 kung saan nandoon din ang mga taga Second Continental Congress at 12 colonies po ang bumoto upang magkaroon ng independence yung United States kung saan da, dun sa nilagdaan nila ay nakalagay doon na that these United Colonies are end of right o to be free and independent state. Yun yung nilagdaan ng mga taga Second Continent, Continental Congress at yun din yung binatohan ng 12 colonies. So, after ng July 2, 1776, makalipas ang dalawang araw, July 4, 1776 then ay naprobahan na ng mga taga-Congress yung Declaration of Independence kung saan tinahinahati na nila na yung mga o sinasabi na nila na yung mga colonies ay hindi na sakop ng Great Britain kung saan yung mga colonies ay mag-establish na bilang isang United States of America. And at last, nung September 9, 76 then nung same year din na yon ay yung mga taga-Continental Congress ay pinormal na nila na magkaroon na ng independence ang United States kung saan pinalta na din nila na United States of America imbis na dating United Colonies. In the early 80s, the United States was growing. Immigration, birth rates, new territory, and the demand for slaves helped the American population to increase third every decade. It had taken less than a century for the na new nation to grow from just 13 little states to the poor biggest country in the world. 
Makikita natin dito na pagkatapos nga ng Declaration of Independence ng United States of America noong 1776 ay malaya na nga at walang sumasaklaw na sa kanila at malaya na nila na establish ang kanilang bansa. Ngunit mas pinagtibay pa ito sa kasunduan sa Paris noong 1783 at dahil doon, dahil sa lahat ng formalidad na sa kanila ay nagpalaya na nga ay naunahan na ng United States of America ang ibang mga bansa sa impluensya ng kultura, militar, ekonomiya at ng politika. Kaya ang United States of America ay pang-apat sa pinakamalaking bansa ay dahil ang sukat ng kanilang lupa o nasasakupan ay 3.79 milyong milyang parisukat. Ngunit magiging ito ang pinakapangatlong pinakamalaking bansa sa buong mundo dahil kung pagsasamahin natin ang kanilang populasyon at parte ng lupang nasasakupan kung, sa, kung saan ang kanilang populasyon ay may 315 milyong populasyon, sila ay magiging pangatlo sa pinakamalaking bansa kung pagsasamahin natin ang populasyon at ang lupang kanilang kinasasakupan. Ang United States of America nga ay isa sa bansang may maraming etnisidad at kultura mula obo nga sa ebagrasyon ng mga tao o paglipat ng mga tao mula sa iba't ibang bansa. Upang mas mabigyan tayo o madagdagan ang ating kaalaman sa history ng United States of America, andito si Mr. Kubile upang ihatid sa atin ang dagdag na impormasyon. Good morning, sir, and good morning to my other co-future educators out there. And now, I am here to discuss the other information of historical background of United Colonies or the change name United States of America. In the early 1800s, the United States was growing immigration, birth rates, new territory, and the demand for slaves helped the American population to increase by a third every decade. In this part, early 1800s po, nagtaas po ang demand ng prices for cotton led to plantations owners to search for the new territory to build their new plantations po. Kasi po sa patuloy po na pagtaas po ng birth rates or immigration or what we call the increasing of population, ito po yung patuloy na pagtaas po ng demand nila or patuloy na pagtaas ng presyo ng mga bilihin nila or mga goods or mga productions po nila. Ganun po, or patuloy pong pagtaas ng kanilang ekonomiya. Just imagine po, just 13 little states po, um, United States become a fourth biggest country in the world po. And, and aside from that, in 1820 po, the sectional tensions issue about uh, slavery or ang pangaalipin po nila, pangaalila sa mga um, United, sa, sa ibang quarrying po, Um, the Congress passed this law that admitted Missouri. When we say Missouri, naman po, ito po yung ito po ay isang state yung Missouri. State po siya sa midwestern ng region of the United States na nagtototal po siya ng six million residents. Ito ang eighteen most population state of the country. Like um, sa ako po nito yung mga city ng St. Louis, Kansas City, and Springfield, at saka po Columbia. Yun po yung mga sakop niya na nagtototal po yun ng 6 million residents. Yun po, ganun po kadami yung sa Missouri na state. And aside from that po, among the most prosperous business of the era were the oil, steel, textile, railroad, and for production industries. The decade was further marked by major technological innovations such as the birth of the automobile and aviation industries. Ito po yung mga, sa patuloy po na paglaki ng kanilang ekonomiya or pagla, patuloy na paglaki ng kanilang mga na, na, kukuha, na kukuha na land or mga new territory nila, lumalaki din po yung kanilang mga business era noon na po yung mga nadidiscover na po nila, na, didiscover na po nila yung mga oil, steel, textile, and railroad. Patuloy po na paglaki ng kanilang production sa industries. Ito po yung mga innovations nila or yung mga nadidiscover nga po. And then the next po, the construction of paved roads, new canals, and railroads allowed force of Americans to the larger economy east and west. So dito naman po, 
um, the construction of pay, uh, paved roads, new canals, and made. Nagsimulang mabuo na po o magawa ang mga daan nila dahil sa patuloy na paglago o kanilang pag patuloy na paglaki ng kanilang country. That's why, ang east and west lesser than extent at mas pinadali po nila yon Mas umisip po sila, mas umisip po sila ng mas madali nilang uh, masusolusyonan yung mga bagay na pa, na dadalihin nila sa ibang lugar. Ganun po. Kaya po mas uh, pinadali po nila. Nagkaroon po ng mga paved roads, yung mga railroads. Nagkaroon na po ng mga ganun like mga tren. Nagsimula na po sila doon na mas lumaki ng lumaki yung kanilang Um, economy. So, yan po, uh, mas pinadali na po nila yung pag, pagta-transmit ng mga product nila like from north and south, nagkaroon na po ng connection between that. And yung mga goods and foods po nila like for the commodities, the transportation po nila, mas pinadali na po nila yon. Hindi na po, hindi na po sila nahihirapan. They carry the commodities to the national and foreign markets, yun po. Mas madali na po nilang na nata-transmit nga po yung kanilang mga goods na mga productions po. And American economy was increasingly dependent on foreign trade. A quarter of the nation's foreign products and half its petroleum were sold overseas. Yun, sa patuloy po na paglaki po ng kanilang um, city or ng kanilang country, sa patuloy na pagda pagdagdag ng pagdagdag ng mga states sa United States of America or what we call the United Colonies, Um, yung mga petroleum po nila nauubos na po parang nawawala na po sila overseas sa buong mundo po yon sa iba't ibang klase ng bansa po nauubos na po yon yun po yung yung yun po yung isa po sa kanila naging problem po diyan yung nawawala na po sila ng mga resources dahil nga po sa patuloy na pagdami ng kanilang birth rate or what we call the population yun po and to discuss the other part of United States of America or what we call the United of Colonies. Good morning everyone, and now we're gonna discuss the size and economic level of United States of America. USA is the third largest country of the world with 9.834 million kilometers squared and with the population of 331 million recorded in 2020. USA is highly developed with mixed economy which is capitalism and socialism. They embrace economic freedom when it comes to capital but also allow a government intervention for public goods. USA is the largest economy by nominal GDP which is 21.44 trillion US dollar. Pag kinonvert po natin in Philippine currency, it will be 1,043.38 pesos. When we say nominal GDP, it is the kabuang halaga ng produksyon at servisyo na nagawa ng isang bansa measured by the current price without any adjustment for inflation. Bukod doon, they are also the largest importer of mineral, fuels, oils, and medical equipments and supplies and the second largest exporter of machinery and spacecrafts. Also, the USA is the highest income country which is 12,056 US dollars. When it convert it in Philippine currency, it will be 585,626.23 pesos. And also, they are the highest average of household and employee income. In fact, according to the research, the median household income is 61,937 US dollars. And again, when it convert it into Philippine currency, it will be 3,8620.74 pesos na recorded noong 2018. of manufacturing naman po ng USA. USA is the largest manufacturing 
In fact, in 2013, ang USA is have a record in manufacturing output of 2.4 trillion US dollars or 116.80 trillion pesos. Mas malaki sa pinagsama-samang output o manufacturing output ng Germany, Brazil, France, and India. In terms of salary and wage rate, USA in 2019 and 2017 has 7.25 uh, US dollars per hour. When we convert it in Philippine currency, it will be 352, which is bigger than to the Philippine Philippine rate per hour. Because according to the research, in Philippines we have 260 pesos per hour. In US workers, they are typically earned of 94,700 US dollar per year. Or when you convert it in Philippine currency, it would be 4,600,000.85 pesos. The lowest salary in USA per year is 24,000 US dollars. And the highest salary per year in USA is 423,000 US dollars for the median household or the middle class. In addition, the US the U.S. have a large partner in trading, which is Canada, China, Mexico, Japan, South Korea, and many more. And that's all for size and economic level of USA. And for the next slide, which is the resources, here is Miss De Villa. Thank you, Ms. Escaba. Okay, so for the resources of the United States of America, they've said that there are four major factors that are necessary for an economy to begin producing goods. Among these four factors, po, um, the natural resources is the most important. Natural resources is the most important po kasi ito, dito po tayo nakuha ng mga materials na ginagamit po natin para ma-produce yung needs natin. So, America has five natural resources po and the first one is the large land mass, second is the coastline shipping access, third is the water, agriculture, life, and more, third is the oil, coal, and gas, and the last one is the unique labor force. So, the first one is the large land mass. So, ano nga po ba pag sinabi natin na large landmass? Pag sinabi po natin na landmass, ito po yung area ng land ng isang country. Dahil nga po merong malaking large landmass ang Amerika, nagkaroon po sila ng malaking kalamangan pagdating po sa pagbuo ng isang ekonomiya. Bakit po? Um, so, America's large landmass under one country enables cost savings in government and companies. This reduces the expenses of buying services and goods. For the second natural resources of the United States of America, dito na po papasok yung coastline with shipping access. Sinasabi po na malaki daw po yung shoreline ng America kasi nasakop po nito yung 26 out of 50 states ng country. Pag sinabi po natin na group of states, ito po yung underpan ng isang authority or ng isang government. Dahil nga malaki yung shoreline ng America, um, nakapag-donate daw po sila ng $222.7 billion sa gross domestic product ng country. Pag sinabi po natin na gross domestic product, ito po yung total market value ng final goods and services na na-produce ng isang country sa specific time period. And also, nakapag-create po sila ng 2.6 million jobs na almost 3 quarters or 75% po is related sa tourism and ocean recreation. Dahil nga malaki yung shoreline ng Amerika, mas need nila ng mas madaming tao para mas mabilis yung process ng pagtatrabaho. Also, na-involve po dito yung construction ng shoreline, paggawa ng barko, paggawa ng bangka. Dahil nga malaki po yung shoreline ng Amerika, um, hindi na po sila bordered by any foreign nation na this allows na makapag-grow sila peacefully without spending too much money on war. Third natural resources is the water, agriculture, life, and more. So, sinasabi po na meron daw po ang 80% ng water ang US and it includes the lake, 
rivers and the streams or yung mga running waters po. So, yung 80% po ng water is nahati po siya sa iba't ibang pasilidad. So, the first 41% po is napunta sa electric power industry. Ano po ba yung electric power industry? Yung electric power industry po, um, eto po yung namamahala sa pagtatransmit or sa transmission, distribution, and sales ng electric power sa isang country. So, bakit ba kailangan nila ng water? but sila yung parang mayroong pinakamalaking nagamit na water? Ginagamit po nila yung water sa pag-cool down ng mga electric generating equipment po, pero nagsa-cycle naman po yung water, so nababalik po yung ginagamit nilang water. So, the second or the 31% po is na spend sa agriculture. Bakit po? Kasi po sa agricultural products, we all know naman na nagkoconsume talaga siya ng enough water kasi hindi to para mag-grow sila. And the remaining percent po is nahati siya sa family, business, and other industries. Next po is yung oil, coal, and gas. Sinasabi po ng Amerika po ang merong world's largest reserve coal sa buong mundo. Nakatulong po ito nung panahon ng Industrial Revolution sa pag-powered up ng mga steamship and steam railroads. So, ano nga po ba pag sinabi natin na Industrial Revolution? Ito po yung time na nagkaroon po ng rapid change sa ating economy and na-involve na po dito yung mga machineries and equipments po. And also, because of oil, it helps to power the machinery which helped to boost the agricultural production of the America. Lastly is the unique labor force. Sinasabi po na merong 44.7 billion immigrants sa America na galing sa iba't ibang bansa. Ito pong mga immigrants na to is nasabing nakasurvive naman sa America kasi po nagkaroon po sila ng mga trabaho na nakapit sa skills po nila and also nakatulong sila sa pag-create or paggawa ng bagong culture and technology dahil nga maganda yung naging simula ng mga immigrants na nauna may mga nadagdag pang immigrants and hindi sila natakot na mag-take ng risk na pumunta sa Amerika lalo na sa paghahanap ng trabaho sa Amerika dahil nga galing sa iba't ibang bansa yung mga immigrants na yon nagkaroon sila ng iba't ibang idea na nakatulong sa Amerika to become a major global economic power. Next is Miss Dimapilis. The religion in this country is diverse. As we can see, the majority of this religion is protestant. Ibig sabihin, maraming tao ang naniniwala na ang Bibliya ang nag-iisang pinanggagalingan na espesyal na kapahayagan ng Diyos sa sangkatauhan. The next, we have Katoliko. Lahat tayo pamilya sa salitang Katoliko. Dahil karamihan sa bansang ating kinagisnan ay ang relihiyon ay Katoliko. Next, we have 16% of the religion which is none. And the next is 6% other religion of the U.S. And the lastly is 2% which is Jewish. Kung saan naging simbolo nila ang between ni David sa pananampalataya. Sa Jewish daw, ang kanilang pananampalataya ay bumabatay sa simbolo ni David, Saint David. So, may any question, clarification? If there's no any question, clarification, let's move on to my next topic, which is ethnicity. First, let's identify what's the meaning of ethnicity. Ethnicity ay tinatawag sa Tagalog na ethnicidad, kung saan kinikilala ng isang grupo ng tao ang mga sarili at ang isa't isa bilang kasapi ng isang grupo. Ethnicity in U.S. therefore usually refers to collectives of related groups having more to do with physical appearance, specifically skin color rather than political boundaries. So, ibig sabihin, hindi sa kanila importante ang estado nyo sa politika, kundi kung ano ang physical na kaanyuan ninyo. 
katulad ng Native American, African American, Asian African, and Hispanic American. As we can see in the first slide, we have the Native Americans. When we say Native American, it's a member of any of the Abronical peoples. Oh, first, what is the meaning of Abronical people? Means, ito yung relating to the people who are in, in region. Sa madaling salita, ito ang tinatawag ng mga katutubong tao. Familiar tayo lahat sa katutubong tao dahil ito ay mayroon din ganito sa ating bansa noon. Gets nyo ba? Any clarification? If there's not, let's move on to my second et ethnicity in this country which is African American. African American were in belong to the black racial group. Pamilya tayo lahat sa black American which is hindi pantay ang pagtingin sa America in black and white American. Mas pabor sila sa white American kaysa sa black American. Kaya kailangan nilang ibus ang confidence ng bawat isa to gain an equality sa isa't isa. Third, we have Asian American wherein we belong in this race. Dito, sa Asian American, belong tayo dito kasi maraming Pilipino ang nagmamigrate sa America para doon tumira. Kaya tayo tinawag na Asian American kasi nagiging kontrata na rin tayo sa ibang bansa. Next, lastly, we have Hispanic American which is they, they use Spanish language to communicate with others. Ito, matatagpuan to sa karinimong bansa tulad ng Brazil, Puerto Rican, or Cuban ay kabilang sa ethnic group na ito or sa madaling salita ay sa ethnicity na to. For the next slide, the industrial structure here is Mr. Corporate. In USA, there are five industrial structures in USA, such as healthcare, technology, construction, retail, and non-durable manufacturing. Healthcare. The healthcare sector helped the U.S. recover from the 2008 financial crisis. The sector added 2.8 million jobs between 2006 and 2016, which was nearly seven times faster than the overall economy during the 10 years since 2008. The sector has grown jobs 20% while the average rate for the economy was only 3%. So in some research, there's are four, there are four reasons for the blooming of healthcare sector. First, an increasingly aging population in creating a need for addition, additional services. Second, chronic conditions suffered by the aging population are increasing demand for healthcare workers. Third was medical advances and, impro and improvements are expanding the type and number of jobs available. And finally, federal health care insurance reform has increased the number of people seeking routine medical care. So next was the technology. The tech sector is a huge component of US economy. According to the Cyber State 2019, an annual analysis of the nation's industry published by the TA COMTIA, employment in computer and IT is projected to grow 11% from 2019 to 2029, faster than the average for all occupations. This has demand for additional workers in STEMI from cloud computing, the collection and storage of big data and information security. The impact of technology industry has affected nearly every state and according to the cyber state 2019, the industry is ranked in the top 5 economic contribute 
stores in 23 states and in the top 10 of 28 states. So, technology plays a role in almost all other sectors such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, transportation, education, and energy. The Internet of Things Artificial Intelligence Machine Learning, Autonomous Vehicles, and Augmented and Virtual Reality are all changing society and industry. As we can see nowadays, technology has a big role in our society. As I say, it has affected the healthcare, it may advance manufacturing, transportation. You can see in US they have a fast tank transportation. They have invented bullet train bullet train so that they can have fast fast transportation. So now the construction construction has been a growth industry in all areas. This includes residential and non-residential builders, constructors, and civil engineers. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, construction and extraction occupation are projected to grow by 4% from, 20, from 2019 to 2029, which is nearly as fast as the average for all occupations. The growth is in part being driven by population growth, which is increasing demand for new buildings, roads, and other structures. So construction construction spending hit an annual rate of 1.365 trillion during 2019 according to the data from the Census of Bureau. So in the retail, the retail trade occupation for 5.5% of the nation's GDP providing 9.6% of total employment in the U.S. according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The National Retail Federation or NRF notes that retail supports more than 1 in 4 jobs in U.S. or 52 million working Americans because the sector employment rate has improved, retailers have less of a need to hire seasonal workers. So the sector includes online retailers such as Amazon and eBay, as well as brick and mortar establishment. The NRF reported a 4.1 increase in retail holiday sales during November and December of 2019 compared to the same period in 2018. So, last, the non-durable manufacturing. Non-durable manufacturing industry produces commodities that are defined as having a lifespan of less than 3 years such as gasoline, electricity, and clothing. So, the non-durable manufacturing is a predominant pillar in the U.S with a GDP value added that 4.8 of the national GDP according to the Federal Reserve. The non-durable manufacturing sector is less valuable than durable manufacturing. However, it employs more people and accounts for 4.4 million jobs compared to 349,000 jobs from durable manufacturing. So, these are the five industrial structures in USA. These five industrial structures in USA affect their economy. And this is how these five industrial structures affect their economy. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rachel Dimaranan. Ang private sector ay mga companies, services na hindi sakop ng government. Halimbawa dito yung financial services, law firms, state agents, newspapers and magazines, and also IT companies.
examples ng private sectors. In addition, in most developed countries, the private sector contributes a significant percentage towards its total GDP or gross domestic product. The United States has 89.46% as of 2004. While the public sector is the part of an economy that is controlled or owned by the government, they aim to provide the service to the public and are funded by tax taxes. When we say funded by taxes, halimbawa nito ay yung mga may-ari ng isang negosyo or the business tax o kaya naman yung buwis na kinikita ng isang tao which is the income tax. Kapag isa kang empleyado sa isang kumpanya, kinakaltas na ito sa sahod mo. The public sector employs 20.2 million people, people in the United States. Approximately 14.5% 14, 14 of workforce. In the United States, there are three types of government or the three categories. The state, the federal, and local government. When we say federal government, it applies to everyone throughout the United States. Kapag naman state and local government, it applies to the people who are citizen, resident, or visitor to that particular state. Again, Ms. Rachel, dito naman, sa karamihan ng mga libreng ekonomiya, ang pribadong sektor ay gumagawa ng malaking bahagi sa ekonomiya kumpara sa mga bansa na may mas maraming kontrol sa kanilang ekonomiya. Ang Estados Unidos ay may malakas na pribadong sektor dahil ito ay may libreng ekonomiya. Samantalang sa China, kung saan ang Estado ang kumukontrol sa marami sa mga korporasyon nito at sila ang mas may malaking pampublikong sektor. Since 1983, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the growth of combined state and local public employment ay mas nagkakaroon ng progress ang U.S. employment. Among the three public sector division, the local government has seen the strongest growth. Kasunod nito ang state government. And finally, the federal government has seen a negative growth rate. Because during the middle 1990s, it can reflect the end of big government movement that reduced in federal rule sa iba't ibang lugar. Then according to them, continue pa din naman ang growth ng state and local government. But it can slightly lower which is 8% only. Thank you again, Ms. Rachel. Dito naman, sa pamamagitan ng 2008 edukasyon na ibinigay ng lokal na pamahalaan, inaasahan nilang lumago sa pamamagitan ng halos 1.2 milyong trabaho. Uh, both private and public na yun, yung trabaho na yun. At saka, may malaking sweldo silang natatanggap ayon sa Bureau of Labor Statistics. So, the demographic composition of private and public sector ay halos magkaparehas lang. But there are few significant differences. Kasi when it comes to the public sector, mas nag -e employ daw sila at nagkakwalify sila ng mas madaming babae kesa sa lalaki. The government employs combine the three categories, which is the state, federal, and the local government. Wherein, 55.8% women in 1998, while the private was 46.9% women. According to the catalyst of workers of the United States for the class of 2017 to 2018, Women earn more than half of bachelor's degree, master's degree, and the doctorate degrees. Then, based from Aryan Hidwich, the sector that are growing, like education and healthcare, are women's employment. And last, women worldwide influence up to 80% when it comes 
to the purchase decision. For the next slide, the external dependency, here is Ms. Digma. Thank you, Ms. Josa and Ms. Dimaranan. Now, I will discuss the external dependency of United States. External dependency of United States. Net import reliance refers to the percentage of a mineral commodity used by the United States that must be imported from, one an from another country. When we say net import reliance, Siya yung nagre-refer ng percentage kung ilang mineral yung nagamit ng United States na kailangan nilang may imports into another country. Typically, the, the United States imports its mineral commodities from a wide variety of countries and in no case is the United States fully reliance in a state single country for mineral resources. Yung United States daw, kadalasan sila yung nag import ng, ng mineral sa iba't ibang bansa. Pero, yung United States, sila yung ay may pinagbabasihan silang single country na pagkukunan nila ng mineral, mineral resources. China is a single largest source of mineral commodities for the US, particularly from resources like rare earth elements, germanium and industrial industrial diamonds eto na nga yung china yung pinakamalaking single source of mineral lang ano di ba ng US sila yung pinagbabasihan ng US na mapagkukunan nila ng mineral para mai-import nila sa ibang bansa tapos yung mga katulad na nakukuha nila doon yung mga rare elements Earth elements na like germanium and industrial diamonds. Yun lang. Thank you.